To end the channel, we're gonna learn how to play Good Enough by Van Halen. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to learn how to play Good Enough by Van Halen. This is a great song, probably my second most favorite Van Halen song of all time. It's off 5150, and when Sammy Hagar was introduced into the band, this was our first first sample of what we heard when we, we put that album on for the first time, and Sammy said, Hello, baby. So, uh, and then Eddie hits this crazy harmonic. <laughs> So what he's doing there is he's hitting this third fret uh, on the third on the G string, and we're gonna we're gonna dip our bar down just a little bit, and then bring it up and then hit that harmonic as we're doing that, and then release it and make it a horse whinny. Really hard to do. So you need a lot of distortion. And in the 80s, people used a lot of chorus and they used a lot of delay. So a little bit of delay will help you out and put a stereo chorus on there. You'll get that 5150 sound. All right, so this song, after it kicks off with that crazy harmonic and that horse whinny, it's, it's got some pretty cool riffs. It's really a bluesy song at heart. It's, it's got a lot of groovy, groovy little bluesy riffs in there. Uh, and that's uh, just molten like lava that only Eddie can add to those those blues licks and make them sound uh, outerworldly, right? So let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the main riff. Okay, this is this is kind of the verse riff and it's also the intro riff. I read that Eddie had an A string, like a bass A string, on his guitar that he was chugging on during the song. This song is in the key of A major. <laughs> So as he's chugging on that A, I think he was chugging on a low A bass string as well. That's why it sounds so, so uh, neat on the record. So anyway, I think that's, I think that's true. Maybe a rumor, but this song plays off of D and A a lot. So what we're doing is we're going. <laughs> So what we're doing is we're taking a D chord. We're up here on the seventh fret, which is a D, but we're gonna play an A over it. And it resolves back down to that. All right, so let me play this introduction for you. There's, in between each one of these riffs, Eddie does a little trick. He does like a little, little cool, uh, riff thing, so we're going to go very hard to do so that uh, the main riff goes we're on a D and we're gonna chug the A go down to a C up to an E so then I go which is a C I've never seen Eddie play this song live. So there's the main riff. So you're playing like. Those four chords, but he's sliding between them. Or you could go. And 
in between each one, you're going to do these little these little licks, which I'll show you after the final one. The very last lick that he wraps up, he goes. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me on the record. So in between these, in between these little licks, or these riffs, he does these licks. So. We've got. So we're taking the G string on the 7th fret, we're going to bend it up, and we're going to do a tap harmonic on the 14th, and the 12th, and the 14th, and kind of release this and bend it back up as you do it. He does that in Dreams also. I did release a video uh, recently called Eddie's Trick Bag and I cover this technique in that video. So if you want more in-depth explanation on some of these little tricks, um, watch that video. Then the next one, he goes. So in between. So he's hitting the D and the G string. And the G string kind of wind, uh, winds up playing a little bit louder than the D. And I'm taking my hand like a C, and I'm going to mute the A and the, the E string and the B and the E string. And let that G string uh, just really sound out. So. You gotta really dip it down so you get that springy noise. And the last one he goes. So we're taking the C on the A string. We're gonna go do a little bend back down to C and bend it really slippery up to uh, up a whole step to that D. So we're going to hit this fret, the 10th fret on the low A string as it's bent up. What that's going to do is it's going to play an A. It's going to bend this G so it sounds like an A. And the song is an A. So it's like someone going... That's essentially what he's doing. He's going... So the very first one is... The second one is... The next one is <laughs> like that. And we come out of it. Slowly. And there's this really bad lick. So what that one is, we're on the uh, seventh fret on the G string, the sixth fret on the, the the D, and then the fifth on the A. It's like in Man on a Mission. But we're going, and we're palm muting that. So it sounds really gritty. And then we're going to go. And what that is, is this outline of a C chord, which I'm playing on the fifth fret on the G string, fifth fret on the D, and the third fret on the C. And I'm going to pull off to an A. And back to. Once again, that lick goes. Very cool lick. Sometimes you'll hear um, hear the band stop. 
so I'm gonna go over that part. So when it when it ends at the end of a end of a verse, we're just going bend up on that C, bend up on that C, and play an A. Kind of a cliche little metal thing. And there's another little lick that he does during the verses when Sammy's singing verses. He goes, he goes There's a really cool harmonic thing which sounds like he's going So I'm on the fifth, seventh fret on the A string. And I'm going right up the D to the G string. It's like one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm going on the seventh fret, B string, G string, D string, up strokes, and then the G on the, the G string on the twelfth. Slow motion. And then he goes. That's a little harmonic thing where he's he's going like this trill. He may be going D to C like this. That sounds like what he's doing. Now there's another really, really cool lick in there that goes. So what that lick is, is we're taking a D. It's a sus4, it's like Panama. But we're just, we're gonna play up here on the D. Sus4. So we're on the seventh fret on the G and the B, and then the eighth fret on the B string. We're gonna slide that G string down to the fifth fret. You gotta let these ring out so they sound really nice. Those dissonance, and he's going for those dissonance with delay in chorus. It just sounds super cool. All right, so that's that's that little, uh, I guess it's kind of a chorus lick. Okay, so then there's this little... Um, so what I'm doing there is I'm riding up this A. I'll play it on the low E string, or A string. So he's doing this blues shuffle from an A up to a D, and then he takes that D, which is basically a C and an E in between the, it also does that at the end of the guitar solo, but he slows it down, or quiets it down, he rolls back on his volume. learn the A minor pentatonic which because in between that that little lick during the breakdown after the solo he does some little just some improv stuff
then at, <laughs> I'm skipping ahead in the song, but I'm talking about the breakdown after the guitar solo. Then he goes, <laughs> he starts up on an E and goes all the way up to an A, which brings us. All right, so I think I've covered pretty much everything in this song, uh, hopefully, <laughs> doing this from memory. Uh, there is a guitar solo in this song that's really cool, and uh, I'll show you the basics of this guitar solo. One thing about this guitar solo that really blew me away when I, when I learned it recently was he's basically playing over the same chords as Girl Gone Bad, and Eddie loves certain chord structures to play solos over. If you ever study a lot about his guitar solos, you'll notice he changes keys probably 90% of the time, and Eddie kind of keeps his, his chord structures simple, but it elevates his solos to another level so that it catches your ear. But he plays over, uh, he plays over certain chord shapes that really work well with his patterns and his techniques that he developed as a teenager through his adult life. So this solo <laughs> modulates, and it's like Girl Gone Bad. He's playing over F major 7, over an A sus 2. So Girl Gone Mad, Gone Mad is. So he's, he's pretty much playing over this progression, but he doesn't play it like that. The drums kind of sound like Girl Gone Bad in this solo. But he's, he's up here. He's up here in this F shape, like this, this F power chord. So the guitar solo, you're playing over F to A. So it's very important to know the chords and the rhythm behind what you're playing a guitar solo in, otherwise you'll be kind of flying blind. So this guitar solo starts off with a harmonic uh, on, the, on the G string on the fifth fret, and he, he, I think he swells into it. He probably goes during the, uh, during the studio sessions, you could you could punch in, and Eddie punched in his guitar solos, which makes makes them really hard to play live when you learn them because they're all over the place, and all of his solos were punched in seconds of brilliance <laughs> to make a masterpiece. So what he so live, what you'd have to do is bend your bar down, hit this G string on the fifth fret, and go like that. But I guarantee you, in the studio, he. He had his volume turned down and hit the harmonic, bent the bar down, because you can hear that. You can hear that there's no attack on that note on the record. And then as soon as that note ends, he hits this. He's, he's on the second fret on the G string. If any of you have played gigs before or played a lot of Van Halen, you, you know how hard it is to get these harmonics to sound <laughs> perfect when you hit them live. And Eddie could do them live, man. He was great. But I'm sure there's hundreds of outtakes where Eddie would like duff a harmonic in the, in the studio. And he'd finally get that one that was just so, so badass that <laughs> they would finally keep it. So that guitar solo starts off with this harmonic on the G string. And as soon as he hits pitch on that, he goes, even do it man it's on the G string on the second fret he does a little horse whinny on that and then he goes so after he does that those two harmonics he bends up on the seventh fret he taps on the twelfth fret and it sounds like he goes 
which is I'm just going on the five, seven, and nine on the G string. And then he comes up to our familiar friend up here on the A minor pentatonic. So, kind of a Clapton little thing. He's on the G string on the uh, 19th fret. He bends it up a step. And then he's on the B string on the 20th. And he goes up to the 20th fret on the, the high E. My guitar's fretting out. I've got my action set so low. I've got to set this thing up, but he's... But you'll have to pretend that you can hear it. <laughs> so what he does on that last part is he, he goes from the 17, he goes 17, 19, 20, 21, or 22, and he bends that up a whole step. goes down like that. So from the beginning of that solo, he's going to... What I'm doing there is I'm... I'm just trilling on this A minor pentatonic on the 17th and the 20th between the E and the B. And sometimes Eddie will go... He'll go down to the B string and do something similar. And then he hits this. He comes out of that solo with a, a, a dive bar on the G. And then we're into that rolled back. Alright, so there you go. That's Good Enough by Van Halen. I know this was a quick lesson, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And this is a great song to learn. A lot of feel, a lot of groove, great tone, and 5150 is an awesome album. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell, comment below, and as always, have a great day. Peace out.